like to welcome you all and thank you for coming today. I am Keely Stockwell. I am Barry's granddaughter and I'm honored to welcome you all here for the celebration of Barry Michael Ward's life. Saying goodbye may be hard but it's comforting to see so many of his friends and family gathered here to remember him. We all have fond memories of Barry throughout his 72 years on life, of life on earth and after we hear from his family we welcome anyone who would like to share a story or a thought to come up and do so. Our hearts are breaking, but we know that sorrow is a fleeting emotion. <laughs> I don't like this very much. Um, <laughs> love is an everlasting feeling, and memories are the legacy of that love. We thank you all for being a part of the legacy that he formed here. And as we mourn, we think of Barry's big smile and take comfort knowing he wants us all to be happy. So thank you all again for attending. And now we'll hear from his big brother, Craig Ward. Hello, uh, I'm Barry's brother, his little brother, and uh, on his behalf, I want to thank you all for, for coming here today. Uh, we try to reach out to as many people as we could uh, on the short notice, and uh, I'm very pleased, and along with the rest of the family, how many of his friends and, and co-workers have shown up today. Thank you very much for that. Um, I'm going to try and get through this without choking up. Uh, my brother and I, we started off in California. Actually, our whole family did. Uh, we were born into a military family and were basically a, a band of gypsies for the first 18 years of our lives. Um, my brother and I, we lived in 12 different homes before we went off on our own. But that's not untypical for military families. Uh, my brother was born in Santa Monica, I was born in Los Angeles, and some of the locations that we had moved to, uh, well, started off in Los Angeles, and then went to Oshia, Japan, and then to Montgomery, Alabama, San Bernardino, California, White Plains, New York, Honolulu, Hawaii, Muscoot, Illinois, Oxon Hill, Maryland, and then uh, my father retired out of uh, Travis Air Force Base out in, near Fairfield, which is the reason why Barry and I have made the greater Sacramento area our homes and uh, where we raised our own families. Uh, despite all the moves that we had, had gone through, we were basically a typical family, uh, although with all the moves we did have to make and leave a lot of friends along the way. And I think that gave both of us a skill in terms of making new friends rather easily. Uh, he and I were typical brothers. We were both very independent, which is an outcome of being a military brat. And uh, in hindsight now, I, I wished I had spent a lot more time with him. Excuse me. Uh, growing up, I was very envious of my brother. 
He was a star athlete and growing up, uh, many of the locations we were at, he was, he was like a, a four-star jock. He played baseball, basketball, football, track, and he was fearless. He was, he was fearless. Uh, he was on a diving, diving team where I can remember times when we lived in Illinois, we would go out on the weekends to these strip mines that uh, had been there for decades and they'd fill up with water and you'd have these cliffs along the sides. And I can remember him doing backflips off of a 30 foot cliff into the water. And uh, he always used to amaze me, just the courage that he had. And in, in track, he was a pole vaulter. I mean, I could imagine, you know, being suspended 16, 17 foot, feet up in the air, hoping you're gonna land in the right spot. <laughs> but he always seemed to land on his feet. Um, he had an opportunity in, in athletics to get into some pro level opportunities, but unfortunately when he was in, through high school and junior college, he banged up his knee one too many times and that took him out of that path, you might say. But then he found a love for golf, and I know some of his golf buddies are here. And uh, when he was in his top play, he was pretty hard to beat. Um, and it was something that gave him a lot of joy and, and, again, access to a lot of new friends. And those of you that are here today, I really appreciate it. Um, 1971 it was about the time my father retired, and that's when Barry and I kind of went off on our own directions. And starting families and getting employed. And back in those days, he was kind of a wandering generality, not sure what he wanted to do. And he and a very dear friend of his by the name of Craig Gong decided to get into the vinyl top business back in the day when it was very popular. And uh, they did very well in that industry for a number of years until it started to fade away, like a lot of things do. And then it was just a, a natural move into full auto upholstery. And uh, the times I would visit his shops, the various shops that he worked at, uh, I quickly learned that he was quite the artist. He uh, had amazing skill at uh, making beautiful designs in upholstery and, and fixing up show cars. And, and I know he's won many awards. Years that he had. That's it for me. Thank you. say about my dad, Barry Michael Ward. Well, if you met him, you loved him. You never knew what was going to come out of his mouth next. <laughs> and that was part of the fun of, that was Barry. <laughs> he had a heart of gold. He had many friends, all from different walks of life. If you're here today to remember my dad, you may have known Barry as your golf partner, you may have collaborated on some amazing custom cars with him. Perhaps you knew him from his 20 plus year sobriety journey, or maybe you were a drinking buddy of his. The possibilities of how or why you loved him were endless with my dad. However, <sighs> however it was that you came to know him, Undoubtedly, there's endless stories about his fun, happy nature, and his shenanigans and laughs. The laughs he inspired, sometimes they were with him and sometimes at him. <laughs> with Barry, if you needed him, you always knew where to find him. It's fair to say he was a fairly simple man. Um, he was either at the shop working on another incredible car or some sort 
or possibly napping on his workbench, but <laughs> um, he's on the golf course. Uh, he's out detailing his own car. Um, he's somewhere listening to live music, um, probably near his home here in downtown Folsom or wherever his son Christopher was DJing that weekend. Um, or he may occasionally be on his weekend solo trips to Tahoe to take in the scenery and to get out of town. Barry, he adored his two kids, my brother and I. There were times throughout the years that he would say to us that he was sorry that he wasn't the dad he always wanted to be. And sure, there were times in our lives that he wasn't always around. But even in those times that he wasn't capable of being present, there was never any doubt of where his heart stood in relation to us kids. I think we all may have made a choice or two in life that we'd go back and change if we could. He was his own harshest critic and little did he know he was begging forgiveness from his biggest fans. I wish I could say that to him now, that and so many other things. In his passing, he's given us the gift of the reminder of not only how much we all loved him, but of how important it is to be loved in this world. You always think that you have more time. Turn to your loved ones today and tell them how much they mean to you. Memorize that light in their eyes. Embrace them in a hug. Listen to their amazing stories of who they are and how that came to be and appreciate everything about them that makes them them, as we all do that today about my father, Barry Ward. He'll always be with me in my heart and forever missed. I love you, Dad. Hi, my name is Nancy Gilbert Adam Wards, Ward Adams. I met Barry when he was 19 years old and I was 15. He moved to Travis Air Force Base with his parents and brother Craig from Maryland. I think from Maryland, yeah. I thought he was so cool with his long blonde hair and fry boots. <laughs> Though I wasn't supposed to date him, we spent all summer together. He was supposed to be attending Solano College, majoring in art history that fall. But after the first year at college or so, he discovered the automotive upholstery business and started installing vinyl tops on cars, which was all the rage. If you had a vinyl top on your car, you were so cool. <laughs> and he was good at it. He was so good, he stayed in that industry for over 50 years. He was very talented, and his work was featured in many shows and magazines. Back in 1972, when we got married and had a beautiful baby boy, we felt like life was great. Time was on our side. We spent weekends on his dad's boat on Lake Berryessa. Once Barry was water skiing on the lake when he took a fall and went under. He came up laughing and held up his hand saying, I lost my wedding ring. To this day, as far as we know, that ring is still at the bottom of Lake Berryessa. <laughs> In 1975, we had a beautiful baby girl, the apple of Barry's eye. Even when life became difficult, Barry and I always remained friends. The years went by too quickly. Though things changed and our families grew, we always stayed in touch. We even took vacations together with all the kids and grandkids. Just a few months ago, Barry was sick. And as I sat with him in the hospital, he was kind of sad. And he doesn't usually reminisce, but he was, uh, he was lamenting that he had, didn't feel like he had achieved any great success in his life. 
But as I look around this room and I see the many faces of his friends and his loved ones, I realize Barry was rich in kindness, slow to anger, and a true friend. And that's really something, Barry, that's success. And when we see what a talented artist he was with the classic cars, we realize his work will last for decades. And that's success, Barry. That's really something. Mostly when I look at his beautiful children and grandchildren of whom he was so proud, I think that's something, Barry. You really were a success because you were loved. And now there's a song that Barry asked me to play years ago when we were kids at his funeral. And I'd like to honor that request now.
He loved you guys at work. He would brag about your guys' lunch breaks. <laughs> and all I could do every time Barry says, come into the course on Sunday, I took care of you guys, because you took care of Barry. And it was great. I just hated seeing Barry go, because as you know, you played golf the Sunday before. We got you out there, and Barry, Barry like everything, and he's always taking care of you guys. And I asked Barry, how do you feel today? And you know, Barry, like you said, whatever comes up, I'm dying. And I, and I said, what do you mean? You know, what's wrong with you? And then bang, I go on a business trip, come back, I get a phone text from Dave Pitak, uh, who's, you know, one of the guys that's been at the golf course a long time that Barry passed away. So he just broke our heart. I'm just smiling because I see all the pictures of Barry talking. And when you talk about Barry's sports, the stories he told me. So let's let know Barry loved you. Uh, and your brother, we talk about it all the time, and I'm so glad I got to meet you. Thank you. Barry, keep the course open till I get there, buddy. I met Barry seven years ago at Victor. I seen him walk in. Oh, I got the best upholster in Sacramento. You need to get him out of those. All right, we'll bring Barry in and see what he can do. Oh, no, no, no. He's not coming. You got to go move him out of Chris's shop. <laughs> so me and at the time Dave Mercado would go and move Barry into my shop. The guy knows everything. So Vic's telling me all this wonderful story. Okay, well. Give him the easiest thing in the world, and it takes him two days to do a 20 minute job. I'm thinking in my head, hey, what, what's going on here? <laughs> well, Vic, all I do is custom. I can't do anything else. Well, so I start scratching my head, and all I do is custom. I never understood it until getting to that point about his art form. He had to start everything from scratch and finish it. If not, he, he was lost. And everything he did, he had to start something and finish it. and. And to that point, you know, so he started getting better and better at the way the art shop functions. So he said, Vic, you know, I think one day, I think I should become Mexican. I looked at him, I'm like, Barry, you can't just become Mexican. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, right now I'm in transition, you know. So I was like, a transition, Barry? Yeah, I'm, I'm a white chicken. What? No, oh, Barry. And... He used to tell these guys, no, I have you, this and that, and he'd, he'd have an on, on, on and off switch about being grumpy, being happy, and that was just Barry, you know, and like he'd come in, Barry, I need you to get that done today. Yes, boss. At the end of the day, Barry, did you get done? Uh, tomorrow, I promise, tomorrow. <laughs> Six days later, Barry, is it done? Oh, 
Uh, almost, almost, <laughs> almost, Vic. It's almost there. A couple last things, Vic. Just a couple last things. Yeah, a couple more things. Well, half the time, I knew, his, I knew his health was going down. Therefore, I got into playing golf with him. You know, Dave and I, for the same reason, because it was better for him being alone than for us to take him to the golf course. Therefore, Greg. I met Greg for the same reason, you know, and, and then from there, my kids loved him for all the candy, snacks. <laughs> But he will be missed. And uh, I consider him a real good friend. Yeah. We'll miss him. Thank you guys all for coming and sharing funny stories and anecdotes. Um, we'd like to invite everyone into the next room for some wine and snacks. Um, and we can continue We're to celebrate. Telling. Yeah, <laughs> celebrate and share some more memories of uh, Barry. Okay? Unfortunately, we forgot to get some red vines. Thank <laughs> you.